This episode is brought to you by our small biz shopping directory and the shop one in five pledge. We believe that when you purchase from a small online or offline business, your dollar goes further. We're inviting you to shop the directory and take the shop one in five pledge with us. It's a commitment to make one in five of your purchases from a small business online or offline. It's a way to make an impact together where and when it matters most, because the truth is your purchasing power matters now more than ever. When you buy from the directory, you're buying from a real person. Our goal is to shine a spotlight on small product businesses and buy from each other. Here's what you can do to make an impact. One, take the pledge. Make the commitment to shop one in five of your purchases through small businesses. Two, shop the directory. Don't know where to find small businesses online? We created the Small Biz Shopping Directory to make it easy to support, shop, and share small businesses. Three, share the directory. Imagine if each of us told three to four people to shop the Small Biz Shopping Directory. It would be incredible and life-changing to so many small businesses. Tell your friends, family, and social network. You can take the pledge at shop one in five.com and shop the directory at the slash shop. Now don't worry. All the direct links in this episode will be linked in the show notes. Welcome to the product boss podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey everyone. I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina Kunlo Sita, an Amazon guru that has built a multi six-figure product-based business. In introducing the other half of the product boss, Jacqueline Snyder, she has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Product Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Jacqueline Snyder, with my delightful co-host, Mina Kunlo Sichep. Hey, Mina. Hey, Jacqueline. Today is a good podcast episode, and that's because it is something that we're actually seeing play out in our community, in our masterminds. It's something that right now, as we are reflecting on the year and seeing our wins and what we've done and how much our businesses have grown, we are also starting to plan for 2021, right? It's that time of planning. And a lot of people are setting goals. They're setting really big goals. Right. Setting goals, but in the middle of being so in their business, they're trying to work on their business and goals. It's two different sides of the brain. Right. And we're realizing that a lot of us are playing around with or or responding to this myth about goal setting. And we actually have figured out a way that you can actually hit your goals and it may not be how you think it is. Right. The myth is that they are so focused on moving forward that they don't realize that what they need to actually do is to work backwards in order to reach their goals. So let's just kind of repeat that for you. So people are so focused on moving forward that they don't actually realize that they need to work backwards to hit their goals. And you might be thinking, ladies, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So a lot of times when people are working in their businesses, they're like, I have this goal. Let's pretend it's $8,000, right? Ooh, $8,000 a month. I've hit my goal. Now I think I'm just going to move it forward. $15,000 a month instead. It's an arbitrary number. They don't even really think about it, right? I'm just going to make it bigger because it feels good. And then they start going forward from that sense. But then they're like, oh my gosh, I feel like every day I don't know what I should be focusing on. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to reach this goal, but I I don't know what I should do every day. It makes them feel like they're spinning their wheels. Yeah, a little out of control. So we can all set arbitrary numbers, whether that's an $80,000 a month, you know, $100,000 a month, whatever that is, whatever your goal is, right? We all have our total year revenue goal, which we've talked about on a previous episode where it's like, if you want to make $100,000 in a year, you need to sell $8,333 a month to become a $100,000 business. You want to be a million dollar business? It's $83,333 per month, right? You just move move the decimal 
the decimal points, the commas, add a zero. <laughs> Both. We're so good at math on this podcast. Carry the one. <laughs> so that's the idea, right? We, we have these far stretch goals. So we go, okay, that's what I want to do. Well, what do I need to get there? And then it feels overwhelming and crushing, right? And it's like, I don't know what I need to do. I just, I know I want to do it. And then a lot of you are probably thinking, well, I need more customers. I need more sales. I need all this. And Mm -hmm. and like Mina said, you're spinning your wheels. So we're going to talk to you about three things that you can do right now that as you have these goals for you and your business, that you can actually work backwards into them versus going forward into them, if that makes sense. Yes. Because a lot of times you'll see people hit a plateau. It's because they don't know how to do this. They don't know how to flip their mind into what it's going to take. So the first thing that you need to do is that you actually need to set the goal. You need to set the goal and to work backwards from it. So starting with that, Jacqueline, setting the goal. Right. So let's just say we're going to stay with this sort of number. Let's say you want to be a $20,000 a month business. Your goal is, you know, maybe you're at 18,000 right now and you want to hit 20,000 next month, right? You're giving yourself 2000 bucks more that you need to make. Okay. So you set that goal and you say, okay, I want to be a $20,000 a month business. Well, great. Cause a lot of us do, we operate from the revenue side of it all. Well, as you're setting that goal, what we'd like you to do is look, think of it in this way. What do I need to do with my systems, with my visibility and with my sales to be a $20,000 a month? business. So what we see a lot with our students is that they'll say there's when they get somewhere in the future, right? When they're like, well, when I hit this revenue goal or when my company's bigger or when whatever this uh, mythical goal point is that you have is when you will do something to fix your business or work on your business or operate in a different way. Mm -hmm. But in fact, you sort of need to implement it or think about it now, what would a $20,000 a month business have set up for their systems? What would they be doing for visibility? And what kind of sales would they be getting to be a $20,000 a month revenue business? Right. Because with that goal that you set, let's say $20,000, what does that dreaming look like? What, it, what are you actually visualizing that looks like as far as systems, right? Is it where it's running like a well oiled machine and they are they have a team in place and they have shipping processes really worked out. So that's the systems part, right? They're making the right margins. Um, So really thinking about that. And then visibility, how are they doing on social media? Can people find them? You know, and then for sales, are sales converting on the website? So this is getting really broad. That's why I said it's the dreaming part of it because sometimes people stop right there because they don't think about the details because of this big number that they made for themselves. 20,000, but it's, that's the big picture only. You actually need to know what that, that encompasses. Right. And then, and then we're going to go to number two. So as you're thinking about that and, and you've made it to this one number and you're pushing forward to that next revenue goal that you want to hit, what we want you to do is we want you to reflect on what's working right now and that got you here to see what will get you to your next goal. So a lot of times you hit that goal, right? Or you're at 18,000 you want to get to 20,000 and you're like, well, I need to do something new and different to get, make that extra $2,000. I need to, I don't know, start a YouTube channel or what else is something that people do? Start a podcast. (laughs) Yeah. Something big and different to kind of hit that revenue goal that you're like, well, I need to add something new I need to start wholesale. That's a big one. Right. To make that, that next revenue goal. Well, while that might be true in some cases right now, instead, what we want you to look at, if you're feeling like I want to hit this goal, but I'm feeling a little bit out of control and and spinning is you just do more of what's working. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear us say this to you all the time, but more of what's working. So if you finally hit a revenue goal and, and you did it because you sent more emails or you followed up with stores that you were selling to and you followed up with, you know, conversations about reordering from you. And you're like, well, I did that. I reached out to five stores and they all placed orders with me. Do more of that. Mm -hmm. Scale that. Now do 10 stores. That's what's going to get you to that next goal, not adding on something new because that's not as much of an immediate immediate return, right? That's, that's, that's a guess. That's like hoping that's going to work, but we don't know for sure it's going to work. It's a longer play. Yeah. It's really asking yourself what worked and can I make it repeatable? Are you going to have a repeatable month, right? That gives you 18,000 already there, but how can you make it 20? 
right? And it usually takes a lean in on what you saw that, ooh, people really liked this messaging or they really liked this particular discount or they liked this particular promotion or sale or item or, you know, time of day when I showed up or they really loved videos from me versus emails or they liked me um, showing what I did at trade shows or they liked um, virtual events, you know, so that's where we say, look at what's already working and kind of see what you could lean into because you're trying to repeat it, right? It's like reoccurring revenue that happens when you have a customer base that already told you, I'm loving this, do more of it. Right. Which is, you know, when we talk about your best seller, it's that same idea. Mm-hmm. When, when, you know, those of you that are, are working and creating products and you're like, I need to make you know, everybody really loves my hoop earrings and I'm selling them. And that's what got me to my revenue goal. But now I need to add on rings Mm -hmm. because they need something else, right? Instead of leaning into your bestseller and continuing to sell that and, and working on that. So it's the same thing. It's like, what's working? You don't always have to come up with something new. You need to lean into what's working and you go deep on that. And then the other point here is that you track it. Our brains, business owners, we are not elephants that like we never forget. <laughs> we forget all the things. We forget how, what day it is right now, what month it is, what we did last week, what we did during this whole time. We'll forget what we did last year that worked well, what we're going to be doing next year. You just need to write it down. Yeah. Save yourself the headache. If you ran a sale on a Thursday and you send an email at 10 a.m. and then you send another email at 10 p.m., write that down. Write down the revenue that was hit. You know, you're able to track what happened and you can track the result because then you can repeat it, right? Or Mm -hmm. let's say, you know, October or November or December is like an amazing month on this weekend, like Black Friday, for example, reflecting on what happened for you during the Cyber Five, track it. Because mm-hmm. I know we're talking about day to day, but we're also talking about year over year. Yeah. And, and really, when you think about this, I love this idea of a one sheeter, you know, because that's SEOs. We can kind of at a glance, look at something on one sheet. It's very easy for our minds to digest. So if you do a one sheeter on the month of October and break it down, what worked well, what didn't work well, what were your numbers, what did you dislike, what did you love, what did your customers tell you, what sold really well? What were the bottlenecks? You know, one sheet it up doesn't, ha- it's a brain dump. You know, it's like an audit brain dump. And then that way you'll have that for the month. And then you can use that to go into November, which at the end of November, you should be doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. And then same with December. Now, I also want you to remember some of you are going to have busy months and some of you are going to have slow months. So you're also on these one sheeters going to want to track that because, mm-hmm. you know, Mina's busy months are different. Hers are not, she doesn't sell, little labels are not Christmas presents. Yeah. But I can tell you, I literally, when I um, have the one sheeters per month and, and I actually do it in a calendar form that I just get like a very basic calendar, I number them one through 12. So I can tell you my eighth best month. I can tell you mm-hmm. my sixth best month. I can tell you my first, my top three. That's what you lean into, mm-hmm. you know? And then she can repeat that, right? And she can she and then she can reflect on what she did in that month and what got her there to being her number one best month. Right. Okay. So the third thing here is we want you to set yourself up like you've already hit that goal so that you're ready for when it comes. So what does that mean? If you have that goal of being a $20,000 a month company, how would a 20, we kind of touched on this in the first one, but how would a $20,000 a month company be set up? What would they be doing in their business that would ensure that they could, they could be that kind of revenue business? Yeah. In the first part, we kind of told you about like, kind of like the, the dreaming of it. What do you see it as, right? Because you're setting your goal. In this part, you're actually making the decisions, right? So what would they be deciding to make it happen? And you have to do it already. Who would they need to hire? What supply chain would they need backup plans for? What platforms would they need to get on right now? So they'll have it for later, right? So those types of decisions. 
Right. So I'm going to, I'm going to shift this from that $20,000 a month company and say, let's say that $20,000 a month, their next goal is that they want to be a $50,000 a month company, right? Mm -hmm. It's a really big leap to 50. You know how much product you have to sell. It's a stretch. That's for sure. (laughs) Right. So let's back into a $50,000 a month company. Well, could you yourself fulfill all those orders or will you need to hire somebody or multiple people? right? Are you the one filling all the candles or is it time? Because sometimes you feel like you're not ready to make that first hire, but in fact, to get you there, you need to make that next hire because you cannot scale your business to any bigger revenue level without that person. I'm not saying hire someone full time. If you can do it, if you can't, you can go part time, but in order to scale as a product-based business, you have to be able to duplicate yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. So you won't be able to hit those revenue goals without a bit of extra help. So what, do you, who would you need to hire now to be that stretch of the $50,000 business? Yeah. In the manufacturing world, they call this capacity. Capacity for a business owner means the people who's going to duplicate you, who's going to, you know, be the person that helps you with shipping, who's going to be making it, who's going to be showing up to bring in the visibility and the sales possibly, you know? So there's all those things that come down to, can you actually, are, do you have the capacity to be a $50,000 business? If you don't have those things in place, then the answer is no. Because even if all these other things, we have um, a student that, you know, all these things aligned and she didn't know it and, and a big influencer posted and all of a sudden, She had 500 orders that she had to fill, she had to create, fill, pack, and send herself. It took her weeks. She was not set up to be that company because she didn't have the systems in place. She didn't have the structure in place. Mm -hmm. So as you're thinking further, I know it feels scary to hire for that, but sometimes you will need that so that you can move to the next level. It goes with supplies as well. We had this conversation with one of our masterminders about his big goals and thinking someday in the future, he would find another supplier for um, jars. Uh, he, in the future. Said, he gave us the date, right? He was like, in the first few months of 2021, I really want to make the decision for this, right? But the decision has to be made almost now because there's sometimes that things take a little bit longer. He was talking about sourcing. Well, sourcing doesn't happen overnight. That is a process. Same with, you know, because it's supply chain, just same with hiring, same with getting onto platforms. Things have to happen like little breadcrumbs to the point of, you know, this is the process of, okay, I'm going to find the people to source. I'm going to decide the quality of them. I'm going to sample them out. All these different things that the more you push it out, the longer it takes, right? Yeah. And he has really big dreams and quickly month over month revenue building. So you can't, who knows where he'll be three, four months from now in terms of revenue. And if his supplier is not the supplier, if his supplier is the supplier for a $15,000 a month company, but that's not the supplier for a $50,000 a month company, then you are setting yourself up to fail. So you need to make some of these decisions sooner in your business. You need to, to, like Mina said, scale, or you need to find the right suppliers. You need to make decisions sooner before maybe you feel you're ready if you want to be able to, to grow into that, right? We want you to operate now as if it's already happened. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same with platforms. So going back to the 20,000 to $50,000 leap, you may be showing up on social. You may have your own website, right? Maybe you're selling a little bit wholesale and and you're doing that, but what will you have to do to make all of that go from 20,000 to 50,000? It might not be as quick of a thing. So over that time, you may need to get yourself onto a platform. Like we have a student that just got onto Amazon. She's a multi-shoe machine student. She just got onto Amazon now. She got herself on now because what getting onto this extra platform is going to be the thing that does allow her revenue to jump forward. She's added a new, a new stream to her revenue, which maybe immediately isn't the thing, but that will be, she's backed into a $50,000 a month company would be on these platforms. They would have these types of team members. They would have these suppliers. They would have these margins. It's not for the future. It's for now so that you can operate now as if you are that company that you want to be in the future. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. Because even I love this example, right? She has that she got onto the platform and she would still need to hire the people. That's the other thing. When you see people make big jumps from let's say 20 to 50, like what Jacqueline said, 
they're for sure the bottlenecks. And the only way they cannot be the bottleneck is if they hire, right? This is talking again about capacity, right? So how can you collectively make this happen? Well, she was able to get herself on platforms. She's able to hire for social media. She was able to hire for, let's say, SEO or something, right? But she still needs to be able to not be the bottleneck and be able to envision that as a team. That's real decision-making as a CEO. That's where that comes in is in this step three of that's why you need to operate from that point of this is where I want to be. So I'm going to already set myself up with the decisions that I have to make. Mm-hmm. And it's incremental and it's different for everybody, but we want you to play with this idea a bit in your minds, play with it and see how you can apply it to your business, what your business needs to do right now to get you to whatever that next revenue goal is. And remember, we're not going to just set it and spin our wheels moving forward. We are going to back into it and say, are the decisions I'm making now the type of decisions I would be making as that next goal, right? As that next goal revenue level. So Mina and I, Mm-hmm. The decisions we make today are going to be really, they're going to be needed to make, like we hired a publicist, for example. Mm-hmm. The publicist, you know, we may have said, well, when we get to this, we get to this many followers, we get to this many people in our email list, that's someone will take to that next level. Well, we may not hit that huge revenue goal if we didn't make decisions now that would be the steps to get us to where we're going. Right. And when you work backwards, it gives you clarity, right? Because in the first part, when we were talking about these business owners that we actually work with, that they're moving forward in their goals and it's arbitrary number and they feel like their wheels are spinning, they need clarity. The best clarity you can get is to look at your goal, the ways that we broke it down and work backwards from it because you can actually see the end point and know the directions and the actions that it will take to get there, the hiring the plans that you have, the platforms you need to get into, the supply chain partners, all those things that will get you there. The products you need to sell, how many of the product you need to sell to start bringing in that certain revenue. So there's so many fun things to play with here as you start to plan out your your goal setting. And um, we can't wait to see where you all get with it. Yeah, thanks everybody. Our goal is to shine a spotlight on small product businesses. You can take the pledge at shop1in5.com and shop the directory at theproductboss.com slash shop now.